Hey guys, Mark here. Welcome to a quick little video to demonstrate uh, hash map usage using a uh, character array to count the occurrences. I'm um, going to go through this kind of quick. If you have any questions, let me know down below and I'll be sure to do my best to clarify them. So uh, let's just go through this little program. Um, we have the character array uh, and uh, the program will take an array of characters and count the occurrences. How are we going to do that? Well, the main problem is that we have no way to keep track of how many times character C occurs. So solution is just, well, why don't we just use a hash set with the character as the key and an integer as the value, and then um, that's it, right? So simply first thing we gotta do is add the, well, add the characters. We'll add the characters to the array, rather. So we'll add the characters to the array, and we'll check if the map contains the character, which is gonna be the key. If it does, increment the value of that of that that key's value rather and if it doesn't set the value to one for that character key well, one would one the number to clarify right the integer and that's really it so i'll quickly just show you this code there'll be a link below to the github to it and uh let me know if you have any questions we have the character array over here there are multiple occurrences of certain letters and single of others um and we're just going to create the map character it's going to map character to integer have the key character and the value being an integer uh first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw those actual values into the hash map i created a little helper method for that um that simply just goes through checks if it contains the key as i wrote up there before puts it there if it does um while incrementing the value and if it doesn't exist there let's just put it there and initialize the value to be one for example we're at index two and we check to see if it contains the key b it does contain the key b so all we're going to do is go to the value and we're going to set it to be what was there already plus one so we're going to use the map.put and simply give it the two parameters of the key that we want to set and the value which is going to override and this actually returns the previous value before it overrides it but that's besides the point um, and if you were trying to use the, the iterator um, and that where you actually get an entry set where you get a set of entries, don't do that in this example um, because you won't have any entries. So this will do nothing. Just a little side note. So once we got that figured out, we're ready to print and see if our program worked. Uh, the three ways that I'd recommend doing this, or really the two ways that, I, that are the most obvious um, are the first two over here. There are probably about five or six other ways, but these are my recommendations. Uh, the first one's just going to be using the for each loop. We know that the um, that the key is a character, so we'll just set the for each loop as a character, C, and then in the map.key set, which returns a set of keys, simply just print out the, the key to string and the value um, using the map.get. We know the key, so let's just print it out, right? So we just use map.get to get the value. Uh, and that's kind of simple and that's really it. So that's somewhat probably the most intuitive way, but suppose we want to um, print it out and use the entries and we know that we're going to print both the key and the value. Um, we can kind of save ourselves a get call uh, and just do it this way as well, which is going to be caught. It's going to be using the map.entry interface or specifying that it's a character that uh, that has a value that's an integer and the temporary variable that lives in this for each loop is called entry and it's going to operate using the return set from map.entry set. This little for each loop does a lot for you. Kind of confusing, um, but it's cool. It's cool, real cool. Um, so we just system print out the entry.get key, which is going to give us the key and the value by entry.get value. You guessed it. And um, those are the two ways that I'd recommend using it. If you want to do one other cool way that I just throw in there, it's going to be by the lambda expression. If you don't know what they are, probably not a good time to learn them. Or if you want to learn them because you see this, and you're like, holy shit, that's kind of cool. Go for it. Uh, or holy crap, that's kind of cool. <laughs> go for it. Um, so that's it. You kind of just toss that in there. But I'm not going to cover uh, lambda expressions in this video. Um, but if you're so inclined, go check them out. They're, uh, they're kind of cool. Uh, and so that's all for the video. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, thank you for watching.